Welcome back guys. Today we will be talking about Linux shells. Remember that this video is part of the Cybersecurity 101 path. Linux shells give you some great features for the commands you write in your CLI. This way of interacting with the OS is more efficient and resource friendly. We will be discussing how to create bash scripts that enable you to automate repetitive tasks in Linux. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. In Linux, there are many types of shells. These shells can be accessed through a specific directory. The directory is slash etc slash shells. So slash etc slash shells. We execute cat and we get a list of all of the valid shells here. As you can see here, the, the default shell that we are interacting with right now is the bash shell. And there are other shells that we can use as well. All of these shells come with different features as to the scripting, type, comp type auto completion, the auto spell correction, the customization, user friendliness. All of these are factors to be considered when selecting a default shell to use in the Linux operating system. All right, so now you can see if we use echo, execute the command echo, followed by dollar sign, the word shell, this will give you the default shell we are, you are interacting with. In our case, it is bin bash. Now, sometimes you may want to switch to one of these shells. What you have to do is to execute the command sudo chsh-s, followed by the name of the shell, or the directory of the shell. For example, if you want to use um, dash shell, use user bin dash and then what you have to do is to execute the shell itself have the path over here and now you have and now you are interacting with the dash shell you can switch back to bin bash or the bash shell if you want by executing bin bash and now we're back to the bash shell now bash shell sh and zsh are the most popular Linux shells out here because they contain most of the features any user or administrator needs. For example, the tab auto-completion auto exists in ZSH and bin bash. Also, scripting features can be found in bash and ZSH. Syntax highlighting, sometimes actually syntax highlighting and some other features such as features related to user friendliness cannot be found under bin bash because it's the default one and the most basic one. These can be found in uh, user bin or actually the ZSH shell. Or what's known as there is also another type of shell called the Linux fish shell. So Linux fish shell. Linux fish shell is very known that it contains the most user friendly features. You can install this by going to the related repository here and selecting the operating system you want. It is available on Windows, Mac OS, and on Linux. Okay, the next thing you want to learn about Linux shells is how to interact with Linux shells. Basically, we interact with Linux shells using the Linux commands. For example, if you want to print the current working directory, use pwd. This will give you the current working directory. ls to list the files under the current working directory. nano is to open and edit uh, files. For example, we have the file here flag underscore hunt. We can edit this file or open this file using nano text editor. And this is the file. This is the contents of the file. We will go over this uh, in a while. And um, so basically, we interact with the shell using Linux commands. Now, the most important part of any Linux shell is the ability to create scripts. So since here we are dealing with um, a bash shell, bash shell is very well known with its scripting capabilities. Now here we have a script in written in bash. Or, yeah, and uh, this script has the extension. If you take a closer look, it has .sh extension, meaning that this script has been created using bash. Now, if you want to go over this script, and under the science components, first, as you can see, we have the what's called as the shebang. The shebang is the combination of characters that define the Linux shell. The shebang begins with a bound and exclamation mark, followed by the name of the interpreter. The interpreter here is bash. Next, we have a comment. All comments in bash scripting are defined using the pound character. A pound followed by the comment itself. For here, so for example, here the comment is defining the directory to search our flag. Next, we have a variable. A variable in bash is defined by giving it a name, okay, and a value using the equal operator. The value can be a number or can be a string. If the value is a string, you have to enclose the uh, value with double quotes. Now, here the value is an empty space. Next, also here we have a comment and we have a variable name flag next we have echo echo is the equivalent of print in c language echo is to send an output or to send a statement or a string to the 
output terminal. So here the output is flag search and directory. And here we have, as you can see, a dollar sign followed by the name of the variable we defined earlier. This is a way to access the value of the variable in bash. So we access the value by using a dollar sign followed by the name of the variable. Now this, when this is sent to the output, it will actually print the value or it will show the value of the variable directory. Now if we, if we execute this, it will actually show flag search in directory and then we have uh, space because the value is the space here. And then the rest is in progress and then the finish of this uh, sentence. All right, next we have a comment defining for loop to iterate over all the files with log extension in the defined directory. That's the core of the uh, script. All right, so we have a for loop. The for loop starts with a for keyword. Next, we have what is known as the counter or the iterator. Now, in case you are iterating through numbers, here in the after the in keyword, you will have the range of numbers. But here we are actually iterating through a list of files, right? Um, so here, before the in or between the in and the for, we have the iterator or the counter. Since we are going through or iterating through list of files, uh, we can we use file. Now it's up to you. You can use file. You can use another keyword. But between the in and for, remember to use the iterator or the counter in case it is a list of numbers. All right. After the in here, we have the uh, range of numbers or we have the list of files. In my case here, we have the list of files. So it starts with um, we have the double quotes. Now uh, with two double quotes, we have a space. This space is to be filled later as you will see. And then we have slash asterisk dot log. This is a way to uh, match all the files with the extension log. This will not make sense for you now. We will, go, we will be filling these, we are supposed to fill the spaces here with the values. Then we have do. So what we, what you, if you want to make sense of this, you can just execute nano, nano, flag, and fill in the spaces. So directory, what is the directory we are searching through? We can go back here and have a look at task four. Probably it is task five. Or six, maybe, yeah, task six. So that's the directory we are searching through. So VR log. So now the value of the directory variable is VR slash log. Then we have the value of flag. The value of flag is here, can be found in task six. And then, we have one empty space to fill, which is here. Now here, it's supposed to be the directory that contains the files that end with the log extension. The directory here is VR log. So you can hard code the directory here as VR log, or the most practical method is to uh, use the variable name. Now, if you want to access the value of the directory variable, what you want to do, you want to do something similar to what is done here. So here the value of the directory has been accessed using dollar sign and the name of the variable. So we do the same here, dollar sign directory. Now this will make sense now. So for file in directory slash asterisk dot log, this will translate when the script is executed into for file in slash var slash log slash asterisk dot log. This will search all, this will search the, the, the log directory for all the files that end with the log extension. Okay, so now the for loop makes sense. What does the for loop do? The actual code or the actual function of the for loop can be found after the do. After the do and between the done. Between these two, we have the actual code that will be executed in the for loop. Here we have a comment. Check if the file contains the flag. So we have an if statement. The if statement executes grep-q flag file. So it will search First, the grip will search for the uh, contents of the flag. The contents of the flag is this. It will search through all the files with the log extension looking for this string. Now, that's the what, what the grip will do. Now, after that, we have an output, right? The output, will, will, the output of the grip here will be directory or the path of the file that contains this. If it, find, if it finds this actual string in one of the files, then what it does, it prints the statement here, flag found in, and here we have a dollar sign, base name, file. It will give you the directory, the full path of the file that contains the script. Now if you execute this now, 
before you execute a bash script just give it the appropriate permissions ch mode plus x x is for execution permissions next we execute so as you can see we have a permission problem if you want to find out why you want to have a look at the permissions of the script so flag hunt can be executed by the user group and can also be executed by the user so if you want to eliminate the permission problem you have to use sudo flag sudo flag Take a look here. Flag search in directory VAR log in progress. Flag found in authentication log. So the script we're able to find the script here or the string here in the authentication log. Now, where, the, where does the authentication log uh, exist or where it is located? It's located under VAR log because it is a directory that we defined earlier uh, to be included in the search process. So that's the file authentication log. If you want to take a look at the contents, you, you use cat authentication log or use VR log authentication log and the contents of the file are displayed the cat is sleeping under the table and as you can see here this is the uh, string that we used earlier in the search process now if you have done this correctly you'll be able to answer task 6 without any issues regarding the other tasks let's go over task 3 here which shell comes with syntax highlighting as an out of the box feature it is fish which shell does not have auto spell correction it is the bash shell now note that the bash shell is the most basic type of shells um, the reason most administrators use bash shell is because it has rich scripting capabilities which command displays all the previous executed commands of the current session it's history command so here if you clear the view and we type history as you can see we have a numbered list of all the commands that we have executed in the current session Task 4. What is the shebang used in a bash script? We already mentioned this. Which command gives executable permissions to a script? It is ch mode plus x. Which scripting functionality helps us configure iterative tasks? It's loops. Now, basically, in the previous example of the script here, we talked about a for loop in a bash script where the loop iterates through list of files in a given directory. Now, what about a for loop that iterates through a list of uh, numbers or range of numbers an example can be found in task 4 this is the example now here as you can see the for loop iterates through range of numbers from 1 to 10 you follow the syntax when you want to uh, iterate through list of numbers so you see here the i is an iterator or a counter that iterates through 1 to 10 you go back this is another example here where the file iterator iterates through a list of files okay Task 5, the locker script. All right, let's go over the locker script here. So the locker script is a script that verifies a user identity before opening the locker. The three factors that verify the user identity are the username, the company name, and the PIN. These three factors must have a specific, must have specific values. You see, the username should be John, the company name should be TryHackMe, and the PIN, is, the pin should be 7385. You see here the variables are defined without any values why because these va these variables are supposed to be uh, read through the user input so see here we have a for loop iterates through uh, from one to three so in total the for loop works three times the first time it works the i value is one we have an if statement the if statement here compares or uh, actually uh, accesses the value of i and sees if it equals to one if it equals to one, it executes enter username, and you see we have read username. Read is a command used to take the input from the user. So that's why, as you can see, the username value was left empty at the definition of the variable, because later down the road, the creator was planning to take the values of these variables from the user using the read. So you see here, the for loop is designed to uh, works three times, and these three times, the for loop takes the input from the user to fill the, the values of these variables. The username, so the user will enter their username, their company name, and their pin. After the user has submitted the values using the for loop, now 
the script will actually compare the values entered by the user with the values that are uh, or that, that verify the user identity. So if they we have an if statement here and we have and and necessitates that in order for the if to execute successfully, all these conditions must be met, all of them together at the same time. Now, username should be John, company name must be tryhackme, and lastly, the pin must be 7385. If these conditions are met, all of them together simultaneously, the echo statement here will be sent to the output, indicating that the authentication was successful. Now, you see here, in this example, when the script was executed, the user provided the correct username, the correct company name, but they provided incorrect pin. That's why this block of this code was, uh, was executed. It's the block after the else. Now, else in programming executes when the condition or when the if condition does not meet the criteria. If it doesn't meet the criteria, else will be executed or the code in the else block will be executed. What would be the correct pin to authenticate in the locker script? It is 7385. Task six. We already answered task six when we explained the script here. So what, which file has the keyword? It is authentication. Uh, where is the cat sleeping? The cat sleeping under the table. And that was it.